Pastor Gemma Wanger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes, and I have the lovely, sultry-eyed Lee Benton. She is a performing actress called to evangelize to the world for his kingdom. She calls herself an evangelist, but she actually became an ordained pastor in 2014. She says, I used to call myself an undercover agent for God in Hollywood, but now the whole world knows my calling is for his majesty. Mm -hmm. She was born and raised in Tampa, Florida by what Lee calls two of the greatest Christian parents in the world, what an honor. Lee received Jesus as her savior at the age of six and started singing gospel songs on stage at age 12. After 10 years as a successful model and actress in Florida, she moved to LA to further pursue her acting career. She landed a series regular role on the hit TV series, Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer, and she was on that for over five years. She's also known for her performance in Scarface, as well as she's been on Young and the Restless, Bold and the Beautiful, General Hospital. In 1990, while filming on a movie set, Lee started a prayer group, which led to her Ladies Share in Prayer Bible Study in L.A., which continued for 22 years. This ladies group eventually turned into her praise and worship meeting at CBS Studios, which I attend and I love love it so much, where she's currently teaching the gospel to both men and women. Currently, she has a faith-based show called Victory Road with Lee Benton. It airs on Uplift TV, DirecTV, Fios, Dish, Frontier, and Roku. It comes on 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every other Sunday night. God bless you, Lee. Thank you so mm. much for being on my show. Now, mm. it looks like you grew up in a Christian home. Yes, my father was an evangelist, and so you would call me a PK, a preacher's kid. My mother was just a fabulous earth angel, what I call an earth angel. She was just the role model. I don't think she ever did anything wrong her entire life. Probably not. And she was a Sunday school teacher. And so, yeah, it was a very strict Christian home. And I went to a um, Christian private school um, from the 9th through the 12th. So I was under the influence of God, yes, growing up. And so then when did you decide you wanted to be a model, wanted to be an actress? Um, I was about 18, right out of high school, and decided, and one of my girlfriends said, you know, we should take this class. We should do this modeling school. And I don't think I took it really seriously. It was just kind of like something fun to do on a Tuesday night. And my parents were so not into that. I mean, we're talking very, very strict, where absolutely everything was a sin. I love you, Mommy and Daddy, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but it was a very strict upbringing. Uh -huh. And so um, I decided, oh, it's okay. I'm just going to go to modeling school and see what happens. And, and it actually led to a full-fledged career for 10 years. I did from television to commercials, local, regional, national, runway work, even though I didn't have the height like you do. Um, you have I would, the body and the looks. Ah, it makes so a difference. Sweet. But I would wear back in the day the platforms. Remember these yes, big old, which they're in goodness. right now. Yes. Those shoes are so in now. Mm -hmm. But it always, everybody thought I was taller. So I even did some runway modeling. And anyway, 10 years of modeling. And um, yeah, like I said, it broke my parents' heart because they thought, oh, everybody, anybody in show business and in modeling, you know, they can't be walking with the Lord. And I go, watch me. 
I won't compromise. And I did. All those years, never did any nudity. Semi-nudity, never did. Of course, I did my wow. share of bathing suit modeling at the time. Yeah. But um, kept it clean. And That's then from amazing. there, rolled into my acting career. So you started in Tampa doing the modeling yes. and the acting, and mm -hmm. then you came out to Hollywood yes. to be an actress. Yes. And from there, you really took off. So many people compromise their values for okay. Hollywood. They get offered a role. They want the money. There's a lot of sharks out there casting mm -hmm. couches. Did you have to really say no? You're, you're like a tough cookie. I can yeah. see that. I can see you saying to your agent, mm -hmm. I will not do nudity. I, I will not do semi-nudity. You know, and you're just a businesswoman, and it's mm -hmm. all about business. I did. But when I came to Hollywood, um, it was funny how that happened. I was doing my first two films in Florida, and then uh, this director had said, you need to be in L.A., you need to be in Hollywood, but I'm such a mama's girl, and I had all my wonderful friends and family that I love so much in Florida um, that I thought, I just can't leave. I can't leave my posse, can't leave Florida. So I thought, kind of like on a whim, you know, I got this letter from this agent saying, and this was in 82, this director hooked me up with this agent that was right here on Sunset Boulevard. And um, it was just crazy. The letter came on my birthday saying, I have no one like you in my agency. I'd like you to come out and see me. I was like, what? I thought it was a joke. I really did. And so anyway, bottom line, it was for real. And I came out to visit. And I thought, well, I'll just take a meeting, but I'm not going to sign a contract. I won't stay in L.A. Even though I'd like to do the acting there, I'm not moving away from my home. And this agent, Carol Brewster, who's now in heaven, talked me into signing the two-year contract, Gemma. And that started the whole career right there in 82. And I actually had to move house and home and moved out here. And I was alone. I was what the Bible calls desolate. And when I looked up desolate, it means intense. Des is intense, so let aloneness. And that's what I was. And I totally identify with all the young guys and the young girls coming here wanting to be discovered. And um, how, yes, in answer to your question, the sharks were out there trying to grab and trying to, you know, they saw me that I was just like, you know, what I call fresh off the boat here. And they, I was green and they knew it. So yes, I had these, you know, a lot of crazies coming after saying, hey, come over and yeah, do this interview. Oh, we're going to do it at my home. And then I'm like, it's just amazing that I got out alive from some of these so-called producers and, and, um, uh, casting people and directors. But yeah, you're right. I was very firm. And I'm like, no, I'm leaving now. And I'm going out that door right now. Thank you. We're done. And they were probably like, what? You know, they weren't used to that. And so I can see, though, how a lot of the people who come that are a little bit naive get caught up in what we call the mashugana. They get caught up in the idea of fame and to be famous, and this person says, I need to do that, I need to do this. And unfortunately, um, they're not strong enough to say no. But I never had to compromise, not once. You know, your Christian God. background, yeah. it sounds like you were whole. Yeah. You were a healed yeah. person. So you went into an environment that was wounded, yeah. that was sinful, yeah. and you brought righteousness. You brought Ooh, holiness. And so you stood mm. your ground and would not allow the sin yeah. to invade your space. That's you right. just left. And what would you say to those actresses mm. who are really being taken advantage of for their bodies? They want to be on television so badly. Uh, can I talk directly yes. to them? I would say it's never worth the compromise ever, ever. And, you know, Keep to your values, your principles, and what God has instilled in you and what your family has put in you. And if you don't have that as a family background. See, I was very fortunate. I had parents and a sister praying for me every day on their knees, which helped me fly. It gave me wings to say no. But 
If you don't have that background, just know that you do not have to compromise anywhere, anytime, Hollywood or any place else on the face of this earth for modeling, acting, rock and roll, singing, dancing. You don't have to compromise. And, and honestly, once you do, once you cross that line, because I've seen so many of my friends that would cross the line and they would do just a little nudity and just this and juve, and they go, oh, it's just a shower scene or this, that, and the other. From that point on, it changed everybody's view of them and they were never hired again for the incredible, clean, decent, G-rated PG, everyone expected them to disrobe from that point on because once you set that bar that low, they don't see you that high. Does that make sense? So, yeah, so never, you don't have to do that. And you can do, and, and I have been blessed to work with some of the most incredible, famous celebrities and stars, co-stars my whole life. And never once have I had to cross the line, and nor would I. And um, so you don't have to. You've got to think more of yourself than that because people will push you to whatever limit you will allow them to. And you've had right? longevity in the yes. business because yes. of this yeah. attitude because you're a businesswoman and yes. you've treated it like a business. Thank you, Gemma. Praise Thank God. Thank you for recognizing that. That's fantastic. Yeah. You said they will push you to the limit that you will allow. Absolutely. That's powerful. Because Absolutely. when you put your foot down, mm -hmm. then they know enough is enough. And but... they respect you more. Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. like it. I want to share one quick thing. May I? Real yes. quick. I'll try to yes. condense it. No. You just reminded me of something. This is a good example. I got called in... Uh, it was, I think it was a Robert Redford film, and I so wanted it. And, um, no, I'm sorry, that was another one. That was another film where I, they wanted me to do a nude scene, and I said no. Um, but this was So a, they wanted you for a Robert Redford mm -hmm, film, and, they, mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. turned it down, yes, a nude scene. Yes, I mean, that's huge yes. that you turned it down. That shows yeah. the integrity of your heart. I mean, Robert Redford, this is his and movie. And I really wanted to work with him. I can't remember which movie it was. I have to go back and look. But, and that hurt. I've turned down yeah, a lot of money. Hurt. You know, at this point, I could be a multi-gazillionaire yeah. for all the films and things I've turned down, but it's not worth it because there's no money here on earth that amounts to the rewards and the treasures that you will have one day in heaven. And so, mm. Wow, that brings a lot of respect to you. Mm. I respect you for Thank that because we see so many it's people. It's not worth it. It's not worth it for the short time of kudos here on no. earth. But no. I wanted to share one quick thing which others might be able to use, these actors going in. Most people that are not familiar with show business, you usually, um, sometimes you get called directly and they want you right there, which is great. Mm -hmm. they, they want you, you don't have to audition, they want you, which is so a wonderful place. So they know your work, yes. maybe you've worked with and them they're before. Familiar. Maybe they're on yeah. a, a tight timeline, yes. just get her in, we know she's yeah. good. And they will hire you once you get established. But in the beginning when you have to audition, a lot of people are not familiar, so you have to audition. Like Mike Hammer, when I finally landed that role, Praise be to God. There were four callbacks, what we call callbacks, which they bring you in. You do the scene again over and over, and then you do it in front of all the writers, the producers, directors, the casting people. Wow. They're narrowing it down from 500 people to 200 one. to 100 to the top 10 to 1. So anytime you get a TV show or a film, it is quite an honor yes. that because you compete against a lot of people. And so what I was going to tell you and share with you, which other people might be able to use, is that they called me in and I, I did the scene. They loved it. I got a call back. So now I have a whole room of all the producers, directors, writers, I mean, casting, you name it, and even some of the co-stars. And it was a room full of, like you sit in front of a jury and they sit there and watch you. And it's quite unnerving. And you have to be on. And so... They, again, had me do the scene and loved it. Well, afterwards, they put it on me or asked me, would I have a problem doing this nude scene? 
And I'm like, are you kidding me? I've wasted my time, not once, but twice coming in here. And you're telling me this? Good for you. And they were like, who is this? Good for and you. And this is when I was just starting like, out. Yeah, really this was in the 80s. And I said, no. And they said, well, you know, and, I, and they, they were dumbfounded. And I said, I will not. Sorry. And they said, but we want you to play this role. And I said, but I will not do that. I said, if you put some clothes on me, I'll do it. And so finally, it's a long story. Finally, I think they thought they were going to break me down. And I see this is what they do to other actors. They kind of like, almost like going into a timeshare thing. I'm not knocking <laughs> all timeshares, but if you've ever been a victim of a timeshare, you know, uh, meeting, they break you down to you just go, yes, just to get out of there, you know? Right. And I think they were trying to break me down. And I said, no, I will not. And so they were obviously of a different religion, which I won't mention. It was apparent who they were. And they did not understand this conviction to my God. Wow. And so finally they kept saying, why? But why? With this heavy accent. And I said, finally, the Holy Spirit, they weren't getting it. I said, well, I don't want to, I don't, it's against my beliefs. Why? So finally, the Holy Spirit said, tell them this. So I turned to them and I said, because it would make God cry. And Aww. we don't want to make God cry, do we? That just came out. Now that gives me goosies. That was not me. That was not from Aww. me. I mean, I was in my 20s. I, it Lord. just, it was totally the Holy Spirit. And all these producers going, why, why, why? They didn't understand why. But when I said that, or when the Holy Spirit said that, they were like, they were speechless. They're like, no, we don't want to make God cry. <laughs> Honestly. And they stopped in their tracks and they released me. And they, and they said, well, apparently you are serious. About and I said, absolutely. Basically, good luck on this. God bless you all. Bye-bye. And I lost the role, of course. But, I, oh, they even offered a body double. They said, can we, uh, you know, you do the scenes, but we'll offer you a body double on this. I said, absolutely not. Why not? It's not you. I said, if anybody just thinks that's me, hello, I might as well do my own body in there if they think it's me. And so it's crazy. Yes, they will come at all of these starving, struggling artist with every pitch you can imagine, which you know you've been in show business. You are in show business. And I, I really truly believe that only the strong survive in this thing called Hollywood and show business. So because, you truly are a Christian in Hollywood because you've stood up for your beliefs. Yes, so many yes, have compromised. Yes. So many Christians have compromised. And they, it breaks my heart that they give in every time, that they think, and a lot of Christians think there's nothing wrong with saying the F word. It's just acting, Lee. You would not believe the so-called devout Christians that think it's okay to curse like sailors. It's acting. I'm like, no. But it's, it's you. It's your body. It's yeah. the voice that and it's God your testimony. gave you. It's all your talents that, yeah. that God has given you and you give glory to God. And you're saying... You know, the F word, and yeah. you say, oh, well, it's another character. No, it's it's you. It's you saying it's it, you. no matter what, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So you say that you were an undercover agent for God in Hollywood, but now the whole world knows my calling for His Majesty. Undercover agent. What That's did what that I look was. like? That's what I was all these years. Uh -huh. And um, because when I first came here, I wasn't really committed to the Lord. I was the wild preacher's kid. Oh, you were? Oh, yeah. I was I was totally. But even then... You had a purity. I, you I didn't would not cross do the, the line. nudity. I would not do... I would not even do all of that. And, and um, probably in 86 or 87, um, I really, truly just started reading my Bible daily and going to these incredible churches. And I was going to church all along, but really just in it and just said okay God touched your yeah, heart in a, in a different way. level a different way about 86 so it really helps to start reading the word and get it in you every day because it really just opened up a whole new world for me a whole new level of dedication to the Lord and I could actually start hearing him speak back and forth to me 
where when I still had one foot in the world, I wasn't able to really hear his voice. Then where did that lead you in terms of your ministry and your career when you had this really this real relationship where he really touched your heart? About, in fact, not about, in 1994, I started producing Victory Road, and I had eight shows in the can. And the big earthquake hit L.A., if you guys, if anybody remembers that, were you here then? Yes, I was. And I was living in the valley uh -huh. in Studio City. The fault line ran underneath my house, and under right under my condo. And I was on the first floor, and the second and the third floor crashed down upon my condo. It's amazing I'm still alive. Oh and it just kind of like made an accordion, and whoo, it kind of like the guest bedroom kind of like became a floating island. Anyway... In 94, I wasn't oh even goodness. sure if I was going to stay here. I'm thinking, love you, L.A., love you, Hollywood, but I'm out of here. Right. I, went to, I went back to Florida with my dog. I had my first Siberian Husky, Kuma, and it's amazing both of us survived. And we just hightailed it to Florida and went and stayed with Mommy and Daddy. And I, honestly, I had like, a, what do you call it, post-traumatic syndrome because every time even a big truck would pass and zoom by and it would rattle. Mm -hmm. Kuma and I both would try to beat each other to the front door. That my poor darling dog was like shell shocked as well. If anybody was here in the middle of it, you'd know. Yeah, it was I mean, terrible. That uh, grandfather clock fell over this way. That survived it. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it was horrible. It, it was my place looked like a bomb went off in it, and so and literally I was homeless overnight. I mean, my place was no longer livable, and it was condemned and so forth. It was just gone. You took the brunt of it. Oh, and at that point, so getting back to Victory Road, it started in 94 and kind of ended in 94 because I'm thinking, <laughs> I don't even know if we want to do this. And I, clo I had an office in Hollywood uh, right off of Melrose and Highland, closed my office down. I'm thinking, I mean, I really needed, oh, and I had just... Uh, dropped my uh, earthquake insurance oh, right no. before it hit. I mean, this is a true story. I couldn't make this up. And so nothing was insured. Everything that was destroyed was gone. And uh, it was terrible. It was really, really bad. And so uh, I thought, okay, I did not at that point have the energy, the funds to even try to shop my show. I think I had just pitched it to Paramount, I think. And with eight shows in the can, closed down my whole production company. And I had to go to work like a real job uh, because my, my TV show had, was canceled. And so I needed an income. And reality hit. And boy, I mean, it's a long story, but I had to go to work what and work a do? real job. I worked for a production company, thanks God. I worked for uh, two different law firms after that. And I'm thinking, what am I doing here, sitting here? And, and honestly, it really, I, I was um, humbled because here you are, a star or a co-star working all the time in the public, and then you have to work a real job. It humbles your, yeah. your little self out. Right. It really you're does. Not, you eat humble pie. You're not the center of <laughs> And attention. so finances were like terrible. I, it was a really bad time in my life. And so I can honestly say I have been abased. I have had great wealth and I've been abased. And uh, no, it's not fun to be broke and, and to be, you know, in need of, gosh, I don't know how I'm paying my bills. It was that bad. And so anyway, long story short, I let the show go. And I said, look, God, I really felt that was from you. But if this was really your dream for me, if it lines up with my dream, then I know You'll bring it back to me one day. Victory Road will come back to me. That dream went on and on and on. And after 10 years, and I, got, and I opened up another business, praise God. I opened up a fabulous pet business, which was L.A. and New York. It was incredible. See, during your down times, it's okay because that's when you can grow the most. That's when you can get real creative. And God uses that period to have you grow and branch out. So 
after 15 years, not enough funds to do Victory Road. And I'm thinking, okay, whatever, whatever. Married and divorced in the meanwhile oh, and all really? that. So, um, 20 years later, fast forward, 20 years later, I'm in the OC and got asked to do an interview on another show. And thanks God, the acting career has been still going on, ongoing. People out there, everybody knows now, but people out there did not know that I was working a real job while I was doing this TV show and while I was doing this movie. And, uh, and anyway, trying to save money. So very, 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 uh, to condense it all, um, in 90, so from 94 to 2014, at 2014, I got asked to go on The Way TV, The Cross, and, um, and met Joseph Nasrallah, the president and the founder, and prayed over him. And uh, he offered me a program. I told him about Victory Road. And he told his person there, his assistant, make space for her. Um, of course, I paid for the airtime, but he said, make space to let her come in and do her Victory Road, do her show. So in 2014, God gave me a dream that I thought was over after 20 years. Who knew? It was totally God. And so from there, growing, 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 and I'm getting more offers from other networks. So now we're on TV as well as, as you said, two other internet shows. But doing his show or, or doing my show at his network, uh, which was a faith-based, which is a faith-based network, um, it gave me chops back. It gave me, wow, I missed this. Lord, yes, this was my dream. And God gave it back to me and it started flying. And he said that we were the number one show while I was there. We grew to number one out of 40 some programmers. I mean, because it was all God. So sometimes when God allows your dream to leave, um, don't be so devastated if, if you can learn something from this because if your dream does line up with heaven, with God's dream, it will come to you. It will come about in due time. Amen. Well, do you want to invite our audience? I would love to. I'd to be RSVP. honored to. Yes. So if you're not sure your name is written in God's big book, that's an important book to RSVP to. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, please repeat after us right now. And just say this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. As I forgive all those who sin against me. I believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of the living God, who died for me and arose for me so that I can spend eternity with you. Please put my name in your book and reserve me a seat as I follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And may you just grow and glow and shine as you are doing and more every day for him. Keep God on keeping you. on, sister. I'm proud of you. Praise the Lord. And thank you for tuning in to Beauty for Ashes with Pastor Gemma Winger.